Ladies and gentlemen, I am Sid Alpha, and this is one of those times where I posted a Dirty Devs video, then the developer sets about making matters worse through disingenuous responses and statements, and also the time-honored tradition as put forth by the not-so-great Andrew Watt, the defamation lawsuit threat. As such is the case with the developers behind Grey Law Season 1, also known as Eleros Origins, also known as a new game that just recently released in Early Access, which is the second time these developers have launched the same game in Early Access, Witch Sun Eleros. Origins. And for those of you that would like a reminder of the format of these videos, here's the short, short, short version. It goes step one, introduction, step two, information, step three, conclusion, step four, you all subscribe and share my videos on every single website and social media forum known to mankind, and I gain millions of subscribers. Everybody good on the format now? Yes, good. All right, good. All right, so if you happen to miss the first Dirty Des video I did on these developers, I will post a card in the upper right corner of your screen to that video that should appear right about now. And for the brief overview of what I outlined in that video, we have the following points that were made. The developers, by their own admission, decided to repost their game as a new product, renamed in order to outdate the small number of negative reviews the game's early access had garnered, claiming that it was a, quote, limited run trial. The developers later claimed they merely wanted to rename the game, which is something they could do quite easily without having to set up an entirely new storefront. The developers also changed the posted developer name of the old game from the original to Frogmore to Frogmore Beta Testing in an effort to further distance themselves from the original game. The developers also changed the name of the game to Grey Law Season 1 from Eleros Origins in order to avoid search rankings, ironically obfuscating the origins of their own game by changing the name of the game, which was their stated intent for setting up a new Steam page for the exact same game. Also, the music at the menu screen and character creator for the game is lifted straight from the YouTube video currently on your screen now, thanks to the wonderful power of Adobe Premiere, that is a recording of a street performance of Clan Edonia, which, given the nature of the already duplicitous nature of the developers in question, I stated was taken without a proper license. Now, I did make that assertion sans evidence, which was a bit of a no-no on my part. I made an assumption. Boo-hoo. Now I feel really bad. Bad llama. And whenever you do that, you open yourself up to potentially being wrong. Although I extremely doubt that I was, but more on that in just a moment. But Witch Sun Eleros Origins is now in its second early access incarnation and is being criticized for the developer's obviously duplicitous actions, especially considering that while they claim anyone who had purchased the game the first time through would be provided a Steam key for the second incarnation of the game, something they have since refused to respond to requests to honor the promised keys. It is also worth noting that the developers are currently double dipping as the original that has been renamed Grey Law Season 1 is still, at the time of recording, this available for purchase for $20. Amelo Online released an article on TechRaptor discussing the developer's actions and my Dirty Devs video on the matter, and on that, the developer stated that the first early access release of the game was not a release, but a tech outreach for publishers and early adopters. They were unsure what to call the game, that there was no missing reviews, as they view any product with fewer than 200 is not a fair hearing, it is distorted user bias. The developer then took a bit of a dig at me personally, and then stated, quote, Regards this Sid Alpha person, we will look into any claims he has, and also legal action against him if he defames the game. The developer then goes on to claim that every piece of music in the game has a full commercial license, which leads me into the next statement where the developer also directly called yours truly out in a public manner, which I think is perfectly fair. And I want to read their words here in their entirety. I don't want to put words in anyone's mouth, nor do I want to leave this poor 40-year-old construction manager, not sure why that matters, I'm a 40-year-old IT professional, with the impression that he was being ignored. So here is his statement. For full transparency, this is our email to Sid Alpha regarding his video claiming that we stole music and hide reviews. Hi Sid, we just saw your video, I think you're being very unfair. Regards your comment about a YouTube video, nothing is stolen. I went to university in Edinburgh many years ago, used to be part of a sword fighting and drumming group in Edinburgh, and know the people who do that drumming, get your facts straight. I actually used to live in the area, the video was seen and belonged to a sword reenactment group there. Why on earth not just reach out to us first? We put a year of effort into that game unpaid. I'm a 40-year-old manager who left paid full-time work to follow his dream and make a game. 
As a clarification, Greylaw sold about 60 copies. It's not a release. It was meant as a tech outreach to talk to possible publishers and people who might act as early adopters. We never marketed it, nor even advertised it to anyone in the media. Penalizing a real game launch for 60 sales and less than $800 of income is simply put not fair. You're creating this hysteria about 60 copies sold, 60 and under $800 of revenue. Why not just reach out to us and ask? Maybe it's easy for you to go after soft targets who have no marketing budget or community managers. About your footage, what amazes me is you seem to have not even left the tutorial cavern. The entire game is about portal realms and secrets. You didn't even look at or show those. I challenge you, go into the open world area and play that. It's the real game. Go find some portal realms. 35% of the game is hidden in secrets. If you then find fault with the game, then hat off to you. I will respect your review and your opinion. I look forward to your reply. That was posted on June 19th. I responded about an hour and a half later stating, you have my email address as you emailed me the link to this thread. And while I am sure you are quite the accomplished sword fighter and drummer yourself, and I don't doubt that you are friends with Clanadonia, if you furnish legitimate evidence of a copyright license for the use of their music within your game, then I will retract that assertion. To which another individual stated that they had edited their posts and videos to reflect that the music may be on loan, also stating that the various other problems still stand Stand, and I responded to that statement with, Indeed, the other problems do stand, but if I am somehow wrong about something within my video, then I would like to make certain it is addressed. If the developers hold a commercial license for the music in question, they will have paperwork for it. It should be a simple matter to clear up. Now, I know this for a fact as I make sure to properly purchase commercial licenses for all of the music used on my channel, with the exception of the outro music, which is not available for licensing purchase, and as such, I make certain to properly credit the creator in the description of every video, nor do I sell their music under any circumstances. And as far as the commercial licenses go, it's a simple PDF that, if purchased, will properly be on file. I then responded back to that thread two full days later to note that the developers have not responded to my request for a confirmation of their stated commercial license, and again at four days after my initial response, and the last post on that thread were from June 25th, six days after the developer posted that thread, to which I have received neither a response there nor a follow-up email from them to furnish the proof that we all know doesn't exist. Also on June 19th, the developer who apparently goes by Mark posted what is apparently to be his final word on the matter on the second, or I should say the newer, of the two early access storefronts in which he basically reiterates what he's already said. Now, I want to go through and respond to some of Mark's statements here. I think we cover the music portion pretty well, and I think it's safe to say that I was 100% correct on that front. I shouldn't have assumed, because eventually there will come a time when I end up being wrong about something like that, but that day is not this day. So first, to go back to his remarks towards me, he said, Penalizing a real game launch for 60 sales and less than $800 of income is simply put not fair. You're creating this hysteria about 60 copies sold, 60 and under $800 of revenue. Why not just reach out to us and ask? Maybe it's easy for you to go after soft targets who have no marketing budget or community managers. All right, so I've created no hysteria, as he put it. I've whipped no one into a frenzy over the developer's statements and actions. I merely state what is before our very eyes. The developer thinks that they released a game into early access, but feel the review score was penalizing them because the game was unfinished. Well, my dear developer, tough luck. That's how the system works. When you release a game for sale, when you take people's money provided in good faith, then your game is open to fair critique and criticism from those that purchased it and professional critics. You don't like it? Don't release your game in early access. You took their money. They have every right to post their reviews of what they have paid for. If you think that to be unfair, then don't sell the damn game on early access. And the developers considered himself to be a soft target. Perhaps he feels I should only go after bigger game like Ubisoft or Bioware or Electronic Arts, companies that do have marketing budgets and community managers. What about Bungie or Activision Blizzard or Take-Two Interactive? Well, I hate to break it to you, but I've gone after every single name that I just listed multiple times over the course of just the past year. Frankly, this channel is focused on consumer awareness, protection, and advocacy. I have focused on the indie market because I'm very good at what I do, and I myself am not what you would call a massive channel. Perhaps, when and if my channel grows up to be one of the big boys, then I might focus more prominently on the larger corporations where my voice and reach might do the most good, but for now, my place is here. 
informing gamers about the duplicitous actions of developers like these, as well as something I haven't done nearly enough of lately, which is reviewing actually worthwhile games. Now on the developer's next statement, about your footage, what amazes me is you seem to have not even left the tutorial cavern. The entire game is about portal realms and secrets. You didn't even look at or show those. I challenge you, go into the open world area and play that. It's the real game. Go find some portal realms. 35% of the game is hidden in secrets. If you then find fault within the game, then hats off to you. I will respect your review and your opinion. And this shows that the developer has misinterpreted the nature of the Dirty Devs videos. Firstly, it is not my responsibility to showcase your game under these circumstances. These are not reviews of the games themselves. Oh sure, I, sometimes I might include an anecdotal impression or two, but the Dirty Devs series is not a review of the game. It is a critique of the developers. It is a review of the developers' statements and, more importantly, their actions. I couldn't care less about the game, to be honest. Why would I when the developer acts in such a reprehensible manner? Now, I'm going to circle back to this in just a moment, but this also speaks very much towards the developer's mindset. When you take a look at their website, first off, be wary because the website isn't even protected with an SSL certificate, but secondly, you will notice that this picture of the development team, a happy, young, trendy-looking team of three guys and two girls, looks pretty normal, yeah? Well, of course, it's a fake image. Well, I shouldn't say fake, but it is a purchasable stock photo that, while you can find non-watermarked copies online, is being sold at Alamy.com with a $50 price tag for website use. I wonder if the developer actually purchased that picture or if he is engaged in copyright theft in this instance as well. Of course, if he did purchase a copyright license for this image, he should have a PDF verifying that. So if he wants to send me the PDF for that image, as well as the music, it would be well received. There were also questions regarding the map on the website, however, while this person's English is not the best, I was able to locate a cell number that, no, I will not show it here, that shows that it is a valid cell number for EE, a UK cellular service provider, so it is likely that he might not be fibbing when he claims to be in Wales. But despite what the developer might think, he has misrepresented his game and hidden from valid critique of his early access title. He sees those reviews as punishment, of course, but the reality is he has acted in a manner that deliberately obfuscates honest critique of his game in an effort to dupe more people into purchasing his game. Releasing the game into early access yet again in order to start fresh and get a goose of income because his game was dying and dying hard due to the substandard quality of what was on offer. Couple that with his questionable use of music that I'm unable to confirm they even had a valid license for, along with a misleading and misrepresentative unsecured website, and we have a developer whose motives are not at all above reproach. Despite what he thinks, he's misrepresenting his game to prospective buyers, which is in actuality lying to people in order to promote sales. You do not release a game into early access, sell copies, receive fair critique on your product, and then simply decide to rename it and sell it again under a different early access store page just because you don't like what people had to say. It is dishonest in the extreme. Everything about this developer from what I have seen has been a blind misrepresentation and everything he has said and done has only confirmed that my decision to post him on the Dirty Devs list was the right decision to make. And on another note, the developer did threaten a defamation lawsuit in relation to his game. Unfortunately, you have to say something that is untrue before it can enter the realm of defamation. But if this developer feels he has the gumption and the drive to come after me in a frivolous lawsuit that I would easily destroy, I will offer him the same courtesy I offer to every shady developer and asset flipper that has made similar threats in the past. You have my email, but I'll post it up on the screen in case you somehow forgot. If you want to do this, I will provide you with contact information for my attorney so I can be properly and legally served. You want to do this? Then let's do this. I will not be silenced by a developer that attempts to dupe people into a misrepresentation while double dipping in sales off of a single game being sold twice to people, while also failing to deliver on the promises that he made to those unfortunate enough to have originally bought this game thinking it would be a project worth supporting. I will probably also record a rant video about this later this week, but I've been receiving a good number of reports from people and questions, including one or two friends, that wonder why I create so much negative content instead of focusing on good games. I could take the cynical approach that most people attempt to ascribe to my intentions anyways and state that it's because bad news sells, but that in itself would be a dishonesty. No, the reason why is because what I want... All that I've ever wanted was to share my love for video games and my passion for this industry, but also, I was raised to be a protector. 
It is in my nature to want to save people from hardships. That's why I took in my friend, her boyfriend, and her six-month-old baby, a decision that has caused me no end of difficulty, both emotionally and financially, because I have this overarching desire to eliminate the badness in people's lives and try to make certain that enough darkness is removed to allow the light to shine through. That is who I am, and developers like these are the darkness that are pushing away the light within the games industry. I can't topple publicly traded companies like EA or Activision. I can't make sweeping changes in the AAA industry. I can help educate and inform, but that's all. Here, within the indie games market on PC, I can and have made a real measurable difference for the better in this market, and that is what I strive for. Not to be negative, not to be on some ego-fueled power trip, but because I want a good game at a fair price that myself and others like me can enjoy, and the developers that craft those enjoyable games can earn a decent and honest living doing what they love. That should not be too much to ask, and yet there are developers like this that constantly attempt to abuse the system in some way or another. That is why I fight for a better games market. That is why the Dirty Devs series exists. I wish that it didn't. I wish that as a format and as a series, it never needed to come into being, but life doesn't work that way. Whenever there is a chance for profit, there will be a chance for greed, and that will invariably bring out the worst in some people. Within all of us is both the capacity for great compassion and wonder, and an equally great capacity for evil. Developers like these definitely lean more towards the latter. So again, if this developer Mark wishes to sue me, he's more than welcome to try. I think him, like so many others before him, will find that I do not bow down to threats, nor do I take them lightly. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, I am Sid Alpha, and I'll see you next time.